you believe? Do you believe in the good news? Do you believe that you can and or have been redeemed? At the end of my sermon last week, I stated that we are in a season of spring for the soul. All right, all right. I touched on how right before our eyes, trees are beginning to bloom. Mm -hmm. Flowers are beginning to bloom. Yeah. The grass is even starting to wake up. The weeds, they already woke up and you all know how I am about weeds, but Nature is coming back to life. All right. All right. Everything seems to be waking up all around us. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, as the trees and the flowers and the grass has began to wake up all around us, we have spiritually been in a season of spring where the Lord is looking for souls yeah. to wake up. He's looking for souls to wake up at his beckoning call. Mm -hmm. And that call, as we saw in my sermon last week, it is a call of repentance. Right. In other words, it is a call of redemption, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah, yeah. The call of God to wake up has been going out to mankind for a very long time now. When his call did not reach man's hearts through the prophets, God turned around and he gave to the world his only begotten son to tell mankind it is time for you to wake up. And I'm not talking about physically waking up. I am talking about spiritually waking up. You see, Jesus, he taught and he preached repentance. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, he taught and he preached forgiveness. Jesus, he taught and he preached salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation that could come to all of those who would believe in him. All right. yeah, yeah. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, mm -hmm. no one can enter into the heavenly kingdom unless they have been born of water and the spirit. So in other words, one must be born again to inherit the heavenly kingdom. Just as Jesus told Peter, anyone who has not been washed by him, that is Jesus Christ will have no part in him. So I tell you today that the story of the genuine believer it is a redemption story. Mm -hmm. It is a story of being redeemed by Jesus Christ. Again, I asked you today, do you believe? Yeah. Yeah. See, those who believe in Christ will not perish, mm -hmm. but will have everlasting life. Yeah. However, on the other side of the coin are those that do not believe. And Jesus said of those that do not believe, he said that they are condemned already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are condemned already. The reason why they are condemned already is because of their sins. Mm -hmm. They never turn away from their sins. All right. They were never redeemed of their sins. Mm -hmm. You see, in our nature, everybody is a sinner. And in order for us to be redeemed of our sins, we must turn away from our sins yeah. and we must go to Christ. Mm -hmm. So my question here for you today is this. Mm -hmm. Do you believe? Yeah. Do you believe that you can and will be washed clean of your sins by the only begotten son? Right. Do you believe that you can and will be forgiven by God because of your faith? in his only begotten son. I simply want to know this today. Do you believe that you can and will be redeemed by Jesus Christ? Yes, yes. Sadly, there are many people in our world today that do not believe that they are worthy of being redeemed. All right. All right. I believe this to be the case for a few reasons that I want to briefly touch on here for you today. Mm -hmm. One of the obvious reasons as to why some would believe that they cannot be redeemed is because they have no faith. All right. They do not believe in the Lord. Yeah. 
that point, in my opinion, it is the most obvious point. Mm -hmm. And because it is the most obvious point and because I focus on it quite a bit, I don't want to focus on it today. I don't want to focus on this group today because they are fully convicted in their sins. They don't want to turn away from their sins. Mm -hmm. They are, in other words, already condemned and there's nothing that I can do about them. There's nothing that I can do for them. Mm -hmm. However, there's another group. There are those who I believe are open to believing Mm -hmm. who may one day choose to turn away from their sins and turn to the Lord. But the way in which they view themselves can hold them back from turning to God today. And I don't want them to wait. I want them to turn to the Lord today. I believe that I can do something for them today. So I want to focus on this group today. I want to focus on this group this week for this group. The first reason as to why some do not feel that they can be redeemed is because of the way that they look at themselves. They realize their wickedness. Mm -hmm. They realize the wickedness of their ways. And because they realize the wickedness of their ways, they have a great shame and a great embarrassment Mm -hmm. when it comes to their sin. Mm -hmm. Not only is shame and embarrassment present here for this one, there is also a great amount of guilt Mm -hmm. that is present here for this one. In this guilt comes a sense and a belief that God is not pleased with them. And not only do they believe that God is not pleased with them, they believe that God will have absolutely nothing to do with them. Now this mindset, it spuns off of such a belief that Mm -hmm. that can be very tragic and it can be very harmful for the person that believes that the Lord will have absolutely nothing Mm -hmm. to do with them. Mm -hmm. Now there are several people who sadly live among us in our world today that believe that they are not worthy of being loved. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that they're worthy of being loved by others or even by God himself. I would tell you that, Everyone is worthy of being loved. Mm -hmm. It's it's certainly by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yet there are those that will perish because of their mere idea of the idea of them being loved is not right in their hearts. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that they should be loved because some of them don't even love themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, And again, I tell you today that struggling to love yourself, it again is very tragic. And again, it can be very harmful to the person that does not love themselves. Now, scripture typically speaks to the idea of having unconditional love for our neighbors, Mm -hmm. all of those who are around us. Rarely does scripture touch on us loving ourselves. However, the idea behind loving your neighbor actually touches on loving yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea behind loving your neighbor is that you would love your neighbor as you love yourself. So loving yourself, it is something that is innate to us. What I mean by this is that it is something that comes natural to all of us. So you ought to love yourself and you ought not be ashamed when it comes to loving yourself. You say when we love ourselves, it becomes easier for us to love all those who are around us. Not only does it become easier for us to love all those who are around us, it becomes easier for us to know the kind of love in which we ought to share to all those who are around us. 
When we love ourselves, it becomes easier for us to also know the kind of love that is good for us. We come to know the kind of love that we will accept. We begin to understand that we're not going to accept anything less because we love ourselves quite a bit, don't we? So somebody who is not going to love us the same way that we love ourselves, we're not going to have anything to do with them, are we? We're going to, we're going to reject them. We're going to turn them away. We're not going to accept a watered down version of love. I would even suggest to you today that loving yourself, it is actually the first step to drawing closer to the Lord. Now, somebody may wonder, preacher, what do you mean by that? What does loving myself have to do with drawing closer to the Lord? Mm -hmm. In the book of Proverbs, it is said that he who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He or she loves himself. Mm -hmm. It's also said that he who keeps understanding will find good. When we love our own soul, Mm -hmm. We can better care for our soul, can't we? Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to taking care of our soul, we'll begin to search for the one who can do something for our soul, mm-hmm. especially when our soul is troubled. All right. Come when on. we are going through hardship, when we are burdened, when we are taxed, when we are stressed in our soul. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. The one that we know of, the one that I speak of today that can do something for our soul and that loves our soul more than we love our soul is the Lord. Mm -hmm. The one that can do something for our soul is the Lord. And Jesus said of the Lord that if we truly seek for him, one will find him. If we seek for the one who can heal us in our soul, in our spirit, we will find him and the Lord will do something for us in our soul. Mm -hmm. But sadly, we live in a world today that wants you to believe that you are not worthy of love. Mm -hmm. You're not worthy of love from somebody else and that you are not worthy of God's love. With each and every day that passes by, The world does its best to beat you down. The world does its best to tear away chunks Mm -hmm. and pieces out of your soul. Mm -hmm. Of course, the one who is behind creating this sense and this idea that you are not worthy of love from somebody else or from the Lord. This idea, therefore, that you are not worthy of mercy, grace and forgiveness is Satan. The devil would love for you to believe that you are not redeemable. And that God will not redeem you to believe that the Lord cannot or will not redeem. You would be to question the Lord. It would be to doubt the Lord's love. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to be redeemed, I tell you today that we must first love ourselves. We must first love and we must first care for our soul. We must then prove again here today Mm -hmm that the Lord truly do love all of us. Even in our sins, Mm -hmm. even when our sins are many, we must prove here again today that God loves us and that he loves all of those who are around us as well. All right. Come on, come on. We must see today We must see this today so that you and those who are around us can know that the Lord not only loves them, Mm -hmm. even when they have trespassed against him, we must show them that he is more than willing Mm -hmm. to redeem them. He is more than willing to redeem us of our sins, Mm -hmm. our transgressions and our trespasses against him. So today I want to show you that anyone is redeemable in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. We should not ever doubt the Lord's love and we should not ever doubt the Lord's faith towards mankind, towards Mm -hmm. us. As John wrote in his first epistle, 
And as you have heard me reference a lot lately, the Lord is both faithful and just to forgive all of those who confess their sins Mm -hmm. to him. Now, to show you that you can be redeemed today, I want to focus here on this passage of scripture from the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel from the 36th verse down through the 50th verse here, Mm -hmm. where we see Jesus, he enters into the home of Simon, a Pharisee who had invited him, who had invited Jesus into his home for dinner. Now, some of us, we may find it peculiar that this Pharisee here chose to invite Jesus into his home. We know that Jesus and the Pharisees, they didn't quite get along well. Uh, It's pretty peculiar to us because the religious leaders, those Pharisees, they always were antagonizing Jesus. They were always testing Jesus. Wherever it is that he went, they would be there to antagonize. They would be there to test him. They were always trying to find fault in our savior. This dinner was no different. Mm -hmm. Simon was looking for holes in Jesus. He was searching for faults in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yet we will see here in this passage of scripture today that Jesus would turn this dinner around to be another teaching moment for the Pharisees and another teaching moment for believers, all of us Mm -hmm. and those who do not believe today. Jesus, he would use this dinner to show all those around him Mm -hmm. and us living in in the world today. Mm -hmm. He would use it to show God's grace towards mankind. Mm -hmm. At this dinner, we are told and we are focusing in on here a certain woman. Mm -hmm. She becomes the primary subject here in this passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing that we are told about this woman is here in the 37th verse where we are told that she was a sinner. All right. All right. So in other words, she was one who lived a way that was contrary to the Lord's way. Mm -hmm. She lived in a manner that was contrary to God. She trespassed against the Lord. Now this woman, we are told here, she heard that Jesus was at the Pharisee's house. She heard that Jesus was at Simon's house. And so we will see here that She made her way to Simon's house and she brought with her to Simon's house. We are told an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Mm -hmm. So she had already predetermined what she was going to Simon's house to do. That speaks to our heart today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to see here. Mm -hmm. Now we are told here that as Jesus sat at the table, Mm -hmm. we're told that the woman went in as she was standing behind him. And as she stood behind him, we are told that she, her eyes were filled with tears. Mm -hmm. She was weeping. Mm -hmm. So somebody may wonder, well, why was she weeping? Why was this woman eyes filled with tears? I believe that she was weeping because in her heart, she knew of her sins. Mm -hmm. She, she knew of her trespasses her transgressions and she knew that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. She knew that she was living a life that was wicked, if you will here. And I genuinely believe that because she had heard that Jesus was at, Simon's house. Mm -hmm. I believe that she was going there to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I believe that this woman had heard of Jesus. I believe that this woman had heard of the teachings that Jesus was doing, the preachings that Jesus was doing. I believe that she had heard of the miracles that, that Jesus was performing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that she heard of Jesus's healing touch. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you today that, I believe that this woman was going to Simon's house to see Jesus because she believed that Jesus could heal her. And she was not looking for a physical healing today. I tell you that she was looking for a spiritual healing today. 
So I will tell you today that she was weeping because she was a sinner, because she was looking to be healed, and she believed that she would be healed. Her way was about to be changed. Now, I do not believe that this statement of her being a sinner is something that was solely assigned to her. In fact, I believe a lot more people should have been just like her in that day. They should have been there in that house. In fact, Simon himself, that Pharisee, his eyes should have been filled with tears as well. I, I, would, I would tell you all, I would say to you all that if we were living back then, that we should have been in that house as well. If we were living back then, we should have desired to be in that house. And the reason why we should have desired to be in that house is because all of us are sinners. All of us are sinners and none of us are perfect. Don't be out there believing that you are perfect just because you are calling yourself a Christian because you ain't perfect. That's right. I said the word ain't. You ain't perfect. None of us are perfect. So we should have all been just like her in that house and all of our eyes should have been filled with tears. All of us, man and woman, we should have been there with our eyes filled with tears in the presence of the one who could heal us of our sins spiritually. The one, in other words, who could redeem us. Do you believe? You see, she was standing in the presence of holiness. And I believe that she felt a great amount of shame a great amount of guilt about her sins in his presence. Again, I tell you that many of us would feel the same way if we were to be standing before the Lord today. Even us who genuinely believe, we will be the main ones who will feel the most guilt because we know what we have done wrong. We was talking about immorality today. We were talking about it physical and sexual. Mm -hmm. We know what we have done wrong. We would be the main ones that would feel guilty mm -hmm. if we were to stand before the Lord today. Oh, yeah, yeah. This guilt and shame and seeking to be healed spiritually, I want you to understand that it caused her to humble herself. Mm -hmm. If she were not humble, she would have never went to go see Jesus. In this humbleness, we are told that she began to wash the feet of Jesus oh, yeah. there in the 38th verse mm -hmm. with her tears and her hair. And then she anointed his feet with a kiss. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just one. It was a few, according to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, this act may seem a bit odd to us today, but it wasn't odd back then All right. because the washing of feet to the guests were very common in that day. Right. When someone visited the home, mm -hmm. it was a common courtesy to wash off their dirty feet mm -hmm. when they entered into your home because they have come to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we are shown in scripture, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, mm -hmm. to wash the feet of your guests was a humble act of service. Mm -hmm. So this certain woman here who was a sinner, mm -hmm. she was performing a humble service right. to Jesus. Yeah. Now we are told here that Simon, the Pharisee, he took notice of what was going on here. All right. We're told that he took notice of what the woman had done for Jesus. And we are told that this man had certain thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. It appears that, that this man didn't like it. He said within himself there in the 39th verse, this man, if he were a prophet, mm -hmm. would know who and what manner, what manner of woman this is, mm -hmm. who is touching him. Mm -hmm. For she 
The Pharisee has judged and determined of the woman is a sinner. Yeah, yeah. Simon judged her, mm-hmm. made a determination about her. Right. And in that moment, I want you to understand that he was judging Jesus as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I told you, these religious leaders and these Pharisees, they sought to find fault in Jesus. Wow. And Simon believed that, that he had found one. You see, Simon felt that it was wrong for Jesus to allow this sinful woman to be touching and and feeling on him and kissing his feet. You see, the the Pharisees were ones to have very little to do with those who they considered to be sinners. Mm -hmm. As we will see here at this occasion, Jesus would constantly berate and point out to these religious leaders how it was not right for them to ignore the ones that they should have actually been reaching out to. You see, the the religious leaders, these Pharisees, they would barely even talk to those who they considered and judged to be sinners. And because they barely talked to them, the sinners, they barely taught the sinners. They barely preached to the sinners. They barely showed the sinners the way in which they ought to go. And so I would tell you here today that that was not right. Something as simple as Jesus sitting down to eat with sinners was something that these religious leaders, these Pharisees frowned upon. Mm -hmm. They had something to say about it. In the eyes of the Pharisees, sinners were irredeemable. In the eyes of Pharisees, sinners could not be helped. (laughs) Yet, I tell you here today that in the eyes of Jesus, the sinners were viewed differently. The Pharisees' way of thinking was wrong, Mm -hmm. and it was a major problem. I say this because as we saw last week, the call of God is a call to repent. Mm -hmm to turn away from wickedness. And this is a call that spiritual leaders back then and today, it is a call that we ought to be sharing and taking seriously with all people. If we are not sharing the call of repentance, forgiveness, and salvation today, Mm -hmm. something is not right. So Jesus, he constantly shared the call of God when he taught repentance Mm -hmm. and when he taught forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Jesus called on all to repent, to turn away from wickedness. So while Simon the Pharisee saw an irredeemable sinner in the woman, Jesus saw a soul that could be redeemed. Jesus saw, in other words, a soul that could be saved. Uh Mm -hmm. Where this Pharisee saw a soul that could not be helped. A soul that could not be saved. Thank you for Jesus today. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand today that you may think that you cannot be redeemed. But the Lord says otherwise. You may believe that you cannot be redeemed, but God says otherwise. God has said that you can be redeemed. Mm -hmm. Do you believe? Let us remember that while Jesus was in the world, he said to the people, I do not come to judge. I do not come to condemn the world. I have come to save the world. When the Pharisees brought a woman to Jesus who was caught in the act of adultery, they sought for Jesus to condemn her, but Jesus forgave her. Jesus was not going to condemn this woman in the same manner that Simon and the other religious leaders would have done and had done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the Lord's judgment of who and what we are is far different from the judgment of man. As I have shown in the past, our judgment comes with fault and it comes with failure Mm -hmm. because we are fault and we are failure. We are of sin. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas God's judgment is without fault. God's judgment is without failure. God's judgment, it is a righteous judgment. Now, to show you what I mean by this, we can take a look at what Jesus said to Simon here about his thoughts on this sinful woman. From the 40th through the 43rd verse there in the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel, we see that Jesus, he explains to Simon forgiveness through two men there. Jesus, he even points out to the humbleness of the woman's heart to wash his feet. Mm -hmm. This was such a humble action for her to take when we consider that she was not even in her own home Mm -hmm. to wash the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that Jesus even points this out to Simon Mm -hmm. in the 45th, the 44th, the 45th and the 46th verse there. We'll see that Jesus points out to Simon that he did not even have a common courtesy to wash Jesus's feet when Jesus had entered into his own home. Yes, Simon wanted to look down on this woman. Simon, he was not welcoming. And I believe he was not welcoming because he intended to antagonize Jesus rather than sit there and gain some understanding. Simon, he looked down on this woman because of her sins, because he thought himself to be perfect. He thought himself to be righteous. Yet he was not a perfect man. He was a man that needed to humble himself just as the woman had humbled herself. The sin, the sinful woman had humbled her heart in that moment, even before that moment. Jesus will see here in our key verse today, acknowledge that her sins were many in that moment. Yet Jesus said to her there in the 50th verse, he said to her directly, Your sins are forgiven. This woman who Simon had looked down on as a sinner, Mm -hmm. a woman of the city, Mm -hmm. Jesus turned to her and said, your sins, though they are many, Mm -hmm. your sins are forgiven. Then he said, your faith. Your faith has saved you. This woman who the Pharisee had just as a sinner. And it wasn't just this Pharisee. I believe others had did it. And she had judged herself as a sinner as well. Jesus said that she had faith. Your faith has saved you. Then he told her, go in peace. She was looking to be healed and her eyes were filled with tears. Mm -hmm. Go in peace. Jesus taking that, that, that weight off of her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Go in peace. To paint this picture for you today. We don't know all of this woman's sins. Mm -hmm. We don't know who she was. The only thing we know is that her sins were many. I tell you that I believe her sins weighed on her greatly. Mm -hmm. Yet this woman knew she needed healing and she came to the right place to get healed. She came to the right place to get well. She came to the right place to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. She knew she had a redeemer. Mm -hmm. She knew where her redeemer was Mm -hmm. and she turned from her way and she went to her redeemer. Will you go to your redeemer today? Regardless of what others may have thought of her or regardless of what others may have said about her, she didn't care. Mm -hmm. She went to her redeemer. You see, Mm -hmm. it did not matter to her what others thought. It did not matter to her what others had said. She sought the Lord and she was forgiven. In God's eyes, I tell you today, she was not only worthy of being forgiven, she was not only worthy of his mercy and his grace, 
she was worthy to be redeemed. If this woman ever thought she was not worthy of the Lord's mercy and grace, Mm -hmm. we see that her heart led her to him anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She may have been fearful of doing this, going to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. She may have been trembling and afraid to go and see him, but she went anyway. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid of going to Jesus today because of the guilt and the shame of your wrongdoings? Mm -hmm. You know that you have done wrong. You know that you have sinned, that you have trespassed against the Lord. Is your guilt, your shame, your embarrassment Mm. keeping you from going to the Lord today? Again, I tell you today that the Lord loves the soul that is poor Mm. and contrite and Mm. trembles at his word. I tell you today that God loves the God fearing believer. If you are trembling today, if you are fearful today, if you are afraid of going to God because of the shame that you may have of your sins, I would encourage you today to still go and see him, to still go see Jesus Christ today. Don't ever let your guilt hold you back from coming to the Lord because he is more than able to redeem you from your sins. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you are not worthy of the Lord's love, that you are not worthy of his mercy, that you are not worthy of his grace. I tell you today, anybody that tells you that they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. They do not speak for the Lord. If they are telling you this today, Mm -hmm. they know nothing about his love. They know nothing about his grace. They know nothing about his mercy today. Don't listen to them. As John said in his first epistle, God is love. Now, when Paul defined love to the Corinthians, I want you to understand that he was also defining God as well. So just for a moment here, I want to paraphrase what Paul said about love. And I want to insert God into Paul's statement there. In the 13th chapter of first Corinthians running from the fourth verse down through the eighth verse, you will see that Paul touches on love. And I'm going to paraphrase this for you today. Paul said to paraphrase, God suffers long and is kind. Mm -hmm. The Lord does not envy. He does not parade himself and he is not puffed up. God thinks no evil. He does not rejoice in iniquity, but the Lord rejoices in truth. God bears all things. The Lord believes all things. God, he hopes all things. The Lord endures all things. Lastly, God never fails. Again, I say to you today, God never fails. He is faithful. He is just. Do you believe today? Yes, sir. I tell you today that the Lord will never fail you. Where you are too busy trying to tear or where we are too busy trying to tear each other down in our world today, the Lord is ever hopeful that you will return to him Mm -hmm. where you are busy trying to turn yourself down today. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that God again is ever hopeful that you will stop tearing yourself down, Mm -hmm. that you will stop beating yourself up. We are often our biggest enemy. We are often our biggest enemy, not the devil, us. Mm -hmm. God says to us today, stop being your biggest enemy and just come to me. I tell you today that if you feel like you are irredeemable, God is patiently waiting for you. God is patiently waiting for you to come to him so that he can redeem and so that he can heal your wounded and broken spirit. Personally, I believe the woman had been weeping in her soul, not just physically weeping, but I believe that she had been crying out in her soul from all the guilt 
all of the pain that the trespasses of her way, her wickedness was weighing on her. And in that moment, when she entered into the home, Jesus, I believe, knew that she was coming. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, she was forgiven. That heavy weight was taken away from her. The Lord, I tell you today, desires to do the very same for all of us. The Lord desires to do the very same thing for all of you who are of a contrite spirit Mm -hmm. and will humbly come to him. Again, Jesus has said to us, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When you get so down on yourself because of the guilt of your sins and you feel that the Lord has turned from you, I want you to know today that God endures. He suffers long is what Paul said. When those around you look at you in the manner that Simon looked at the sinful woman, just remember today that God is always with you. Again, he endures. I tell you today, when people are trying to tear you down, just remember what Paul wrote to the Romans. Paul said to the Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? In other words, If God is with you, if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can stand against you? Who can be victorious over you? I want you to know today that you have a redeemer in Jesus Christ. He is with you. The Lord loves you. So do not tear yourself apart and do not let others tear you apart. Mm -hmm. Also, I tell you today, do not weigh yourself down with the guilt of your sin Mm -hmm. and do not let anyone else do the same to you. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that you are worthy of love Mm -hmm. and you are most certainly worthy to be redeemed in the Lord's eyes. Mm -hmm. And so again, the question remains today. Do you believe? Do you believe that you can and will be washed clean of your sins through your faith in the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ? Do you believe that you can and will be forgiven by God because of your faith in his only begotten Son? Do you believe that you can and will be redeemed by Christ? I certainly hope that you do. If you do not, don't worry. I'm coming back on the second Sunday with another part of this sermon because we have been reconciled to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.